friends, welcome to the Healing Streams Reflections. The title for today's post is Divine Directives. In the middle of life's continuing problems and challenges, and how Jacob's family, hated by their neighbors, the Canaanites and the Peritites, the people living in the land, According to Genesis chapter 34, verse 30, Jacob's life was at its breaking point, not knowing what next. Then God said to Jacob, Go up to Bethel and settle there and build an altar there to God who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. Genesis chapter 35, verse 1. God intervenes. Yes, Jacob was terribly disturbed by what his sons had done to Shechem. He was scared for the safety of his family. Most often when we find ourselves in difficult situations, God comes to our aid. It is a common thing in life to experience challenges, but how we handle them matters. God stepped in and told him what to do and why. God spoke to Jacob to move his family away from Shechem and to go to Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. Jacob obviously made a wrong choice in going to Shechem in the first place. He had not consulted God before settling there. It is important that before we take any important steps in life, we should seek God's guidance. He delights in guiding his children. For them to enter battle, Jacob must prepare his family for relocation by putting away the foreign gods that are among them, purify themselves, and change their garments. Because verse 2 says, according to Genesis chapter 35, verse 2, it reads, And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, purify yourselves, and change your garments. Bethel was to Jacob a holy place where he had his first encounter with God. He did not want members of his family to enter Bethel with any idols. The instructions here are very important in our relationship with God. Perhaps God uses our many crises in life to get our attention. It could also be an opportunity for us to draw closer to him just like Jacob and his family must be pure to enter into battle we must also do away with all foreign gods and purify ourselves to gain access into God's presence it must be a deliberate action the people obey Jacob and give away everything that could disqualify them from entering into battle. So when Jacob household gave Jacob all the foreign gods he had and the rings in their ears and Jacob buried them under the oak of Shechem, the terror of God fell upon towns all around them so that no one pursued them. And on coming to Bethel in the land of Canaan, Jacob built an altar 
according to Genesis chapter 35, verse 2 to 7. Friends, if we are to make progress in our spiritual pilgrimage, we must put away all idols in our lives. An idol is anything so dear to you that it takes the place of God in your, in your lives. God hates idolatry. According to Leviticus chapter 26, verse 11. Are we ready to do away with bad habits and the sin that easily beset us so we can enter into heaven? To have fellowship with God, nothing should stand between him and us. Anything that takes the place of God in our lives is an idol. It could be a desire, an idea, physical or material things. God protected Jacob and his family by allowing his terror fell upon the towns all around them so that no one pursued them. According to verse 5 of Genesis chapter 35, which says, And they journeyed, and terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. My God, help us to do away with anything that will disqualify us from making heaven. When Jacob and his family arrived in Bethel, God renewed his wonderful promises to him. Despite the interruption in verse 8, the death of Deborah, Rebekah's nest, and was buried in Bethel, God revisited his covenant with Jacob. And therefore, in Genesis chapter 35, verse 9 to 13, then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padam Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, I give to you and to your descendants. After you, I give this land. Then God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. Brothers and sisters, this is God revisiting his covenant with Jacob and confirming his new name. Obedience to God's leading attracts his blessings. When situations around us seem hopeless and we are perplexed on every side, just like Jacob, it is time to return to God and not to despair, according to Psalm 42, verses 1 to 6. Father, may my altar be a living one with a constant flow of fellowship. Love it. Of Lord. The second appearance of God to Jacob is reassuring him of his presence. As I read in Genesis chapter 35, verse 1, when God said to Jacob, Go up to Bethel and settle there and build an altar there to God who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. Genesis 35. Remember that. God had already changed Jacob's name to Israel. In Genesis chapter 32 verse 28. God means whatever he says. And he had to remind Jacob of this in verse 10. When God declared a king and God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore. But Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. That is a reminder of God. If you were Jacob, what would you have been your reaction to verses 11 to 12 
When God said also, God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, I give to you and to your descendant after you. I give this land. What a mighty and promise. Keeping God, we said. Has God spoken or made any promise to you in the past? You can be sure that he will keep to it as long as you keep obeying him. As Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 informs us, it is equally important that we have an altar, a meeting place with God. The altar Jacob set up was to serve as a memorial or a remembrance of his encounter with God. Do you have such an altar in your life? Life is not all sunshine. We all have times of sorrow. After such a wonderful time, dwelling in God's presence and being assured of his blessings, one may not anticipate any sorrowful event. Jacob suddenly found himself in a very devastating situation. For Jacob, however, it was another moment of mourning, as verse 16 to 20 tells us. And it read, Then they journeyed from Bethel, and when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrat, Rachel labored in childbirth, and she had hard labor. Verse 17, Now it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said to her, do not fear, you have this son also. And so it was, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Ben-Uni, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephraim, that is Bethlehem. And Jacob set the pillar on her grave, which is the pillar of Rachel. Rachel's grave to this day. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, Jacob's beloved wife, Rachel, died while giving birth to Benjamin, the last of Jacob's twelve sons. The death of Rachel, whom he labored for fourteen years to marry, must have caused him much pain. According to Genesis 29, verse 21 to 30, Israel experienced the loss of a loved one to a childbirth. Even with such pain, life must continue. Jacob handled this by quickly changing the name of the child to Benjamin instead of Benoni and move on with his life. Jacob has a newborn baby to cater for. As Jacob mourned for her, God comforted him with this wonderful son called Benjamin. Even in the deepest sorrow, God has a way of comforting us. But the Christian death is not the end of life, but a transition to eternal life. That is why Christians are enjoying not to sorrow like unbelievers, as Paul informs us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13-18. It could be that through Jacob, fellowship with God, he had obtained strength to face the future. When we meet trials or troubles in life, we should not allow them to wear us down. Rather, we should rely on God who gives us the inner strength to move on with life despite the situations around us. Reuben's action in verse 22 says Reuben went in and slept with his father's concubine Belha and Israel head of it will have added to Jacob's pain. Reuben's sexual sin cost him his inheritance and place of leadership as the firstborn son when Jacob was about to go to be with his ancestors. Genesis chapter 49 3 to 4 and also first chronicles chapter 5 verse 1 the sin you may think is hidden will surely find you out one day 
We must learn how to lighten people's burden and not to add to their pain as Ruby did to his father, Jacob, when the wife, Rachel, died. As if that was not enough, Isaac, Jacob's father, also died. Jacob was privileged to return to his father, Isaac, in Hebron. They had not seen each other for over 20 years. Shortly after his arrival, Isaac died at the age of 180 years and was buried by his two sons. Today, someone will have said that Jacob was not in God's will. Following God does not mean we will not have trouble. According to John chapter 16, verse 33, as Jesus echoed to his disciples, the joyful part is that God is always there for us and with us. However, it is an honor for Jacob and Esau to bury Isaac. Likewise, it is an honor for children to bury their parents. Some even go into debt to do so. Christian leaders should teach their flocks or be modest on such occasions. The resources we have are better used for the gospel and other worthy causes. O oh Lord, Thank you that you are our comforter in times of sorrow. Despite all these troubles, Israel was blessed with many sons. Genesis chapter 35, verse 23 to 27 says, and I read Genesis chapter 35, verse 23, all the way through to 27. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, Levi, Judah, Isaac, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's maidservant, were Dan and Naphtali. And the sons of Zilpha, Leah's maidservant, were God and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob, who were born to him in Padam Ram. Then Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre on Kejav Abba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had dwelt. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years. So Isaac breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people, being old and full of days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Brothers and sisters, Despite all these troubles, Israel indeed was blessed with many sons, as I've read from Genesis chapter 35, 23 to 27. He finally arrived, yes, at his destination, dwelling in the land of promise, and saw the end of his father. Father God, help us to always follow your will no matter the challenges of our way. Thanks for listening, and God richly bless you. Bye-bye.